This is a story about never giving up. A story of giants. There's a long ridge in Central Trip County, South Dakota. It looks out of place. There was a time when it wasn't there. They say it was a summer of storms when Red Calf's people were camped south of the Great Muddy, now known as the Missouri River. Cloud and Plum were married in the moon of ripening berries. Two evenings later, a storm blew in. Big black clouds rolled across the sky, and the thunder shouted, their angry eyes flashing with the light of a hundred suns. But the storm was not the worst thing that happened. Something dark and ugly came out of the night, ripping into the village. Cloud and Plum huddled in their lodge. From the darkness they heard cries of terror. Women and children screamed. Something ripped into their lodge, a mountainous black figure. It was Ea the giant, with the strength of a thousand men, the blackest of hearts, and the bottomless hunger. A hand larger than a grown man snatched Plum away from Cloud and tossed her into a mouth like a large hole in the ground, and she was gone. Ea tore apart the village to satisfy his hunger. No one could stop him. He grabbed girls and young women and tossed them into his wide, slobbering mouth. Then he was gone into the blackness of the stormy night. By dawn, the storm weakened. Red Calf gathered the council of old men to consider what to do. It was no use to do anything, some said. Ea is too big and powerful. Move the village and hope he doesn't return, some advised. Cloud didn't intend to make the move. He was angry and announced he would gather his weapons and strike out after Ea. Seven others joined him. Eight young men headed east, armed with lances, knives, and bows and arrows. Ea's trail was easy to follow. His footprints were so deep, rainwater collected in him. They found him asleep on a hillside. He was an ugly beast, naked and unwashed, twigs and branches caught in his long, tangled hair. Cloud and the others had never seen Ea. They knew him as an imaginary creature in the stories told by the old ones. Now there he was, bigger than any living thing. Inside his stomach were Plum and the other girls. Black Fox asked the question on all their minds. How will we defeat such a thing? We will think of something, Cloud said. Ea arose and walked eastward, flattening everything in his path. They followed until the giant stopped at dusk to sleep in a gully. The young men made camp, and Cloud suddenly thought of an idea to kill him. We will trap him, he announced. He has a weakness. He is always hungry. We will use it to trap him. I will offer myself. I will get him to chase me. And I will lead him into the trap, a hole in the ground that we will dig. Through the night they talked. Six would dig a hole while Cloud and one other would decoy Ea to the trap. The place for the trap was a dry creek where the ground was sand and easy to dig. They made stone axes. The digging started when Cloud and Yellowhawk left to find the giant. They would keep him decoyed. When the signal fire was lit, they would know the trap was ready. Then they would lead him to it. They found him easily, for Ea never bathed and could be located at great distances when the wind was right. The others dug and dug. Dirt piled up on each side of the trench as they dug deeper and deeper. Days and nights passed. The diggers worked without rest. Out on the prairie, Ea set out with long strides. Cloud and Yellowhawk ran to keep pace. All went well until Ea spotted them. With a yell of surprise and anger, he stumbled after them. The ground shook. Ea's feet were like boulders crashing to the earth, yet they were able to stay away from him. It was a dangerous game, and Cloud and Yellowhawk grew tired because they could not rest. Back to the west, the trench was growing deeper and deeper. The others worked their fingers bloody. The thought of their women inside the ugly giant's stomach was enough to make them work harder. The trench was as deep as five men standing on top of one another. It was finished. 
it was time to signal Cloud and Yellowhawk. The diggers gathered driftwood and dried brush to cover the trench. Then another pile of wood was set on fire. Cloud and Yellowhawk saw the fire in the distance. The others had finished the trap. Now Cloud would have to lead the giant. He prayed and made offerings and went after the angry and dangerous Ea. It was easy to get him to follow, but to stay alive, Cloud had to keep out of the giant's long reach. The chase continued through the day, and Cloud was tiring. He led Ea across the prairie and toward the trench. The others saw Ea approaching and hid. If Ea fell into the trench, they had to collapse the mounds of earth into the hole. Closer, Ea came, looming larger and larger. They saw a man running before him. It was Cloud, stumbling badly. Soaked in sweat, he ran only on sheer willpower. He fell many times and fought mightily to stand and push on. On a grassy slope, Cloud lost his footing and slid. Ea's hand came down like a falling tree. Cloud rolled and barely avoided being flattened. But he had no more strength. He was too exhausted to be afraid. He had given everything he had and could do no more. Closing his eyes, he waited for Ea to crush the life out of him. But somewhere deep inside, he found a pebble of strength, one last spark of hope to save Plum and the other women. With a bellow of rage, he rolled away from Ea's outstretched fingers and leaped to his feet. The ground shook under Ea as Cloud ran for the trench. Behind him, Ea's mouth was curled into a snarl, his yellow teeth bared and his long black hair swirling like black smoke. Cloud reached the trench and was halfway across when he heard a shout of triumph, and Ea's cry of surprise, and a loud cracking. Ea followed Cloud and broke through the trench covering. It was far too heavy, and he went down into the trench. Ea fell to the bottom, caught firmly in the hole. Dust billowed upward as he struggled, filling the air with his deafening yells of rage. The others collapsed the dirt down into the trench. Ea's yells turned to whimpers. His arm reached up, one hand clawed at the edge of the hole, but he could not free himself. Ea struggled with all his might, coughing as dirt covered his head. His struggles weakened, and he coughed no more. A silence fell over the land. All the young men stood gaping at the dead giant. Somehow, they had defeated it. Cloud jumped into the trench and sliced open Ea's stomach. Foul air and a green-yellow slime leaked out. He reached in and pulled out the body of a girl more dead than alive. With a yell, the other young men jumped into the pit as Cloud enlarged the opening and found more bodies. All the young women and girls were barely alive. The young men pulled them out of the giant's stomach and took them to the nearby stream. In its cool waters, they were gently revived and cleaned. The young men filled in the hole to cover Ea's body, and the dirt piled higher and higher until it became a long ridge. In time, grass and cactus grew on it. Cloud and Plum grew old together. They raised two children along the way and heard the laughter of several grandchildren. On stormy summer nights, Plum would gather her grandchildren and tell them the story of a terrible, ugly giant. The little ones would ask Grandma Plum if giants were real, and she would only smile. It was so long ago that summer of many storms, in the days before the coming of horses. Plum, Cloud, and the others live only in stories now. The same is true of Ea. But there is a long ridge covered with grass and cactus running east to west along a highway. Many people drive by it every day. To most, it is only a long hill. A few of us, though, still remember the story of how Ea was defeated. We know that ridge is his grave. But in our hearts, we think of it more as something built by love, courage, and perseverance. And by giants. Mm -hmm.